Welcome back Ceramics 2. This is your first lesson on the potter's wheel in Ceramics 2. We're going to be making a citrus juicer. You can see this is a student example. It's going to have the outside bowl shape, the inside cove for juicing the citrus, whether it's a lemon or an orange or something, a little spout for pouring out the juice when you're done, and a small handle at the back for holding it so when you pour it you can actually, you know, tilt it comfortably. All right, and this is kind of the basic version. I'm going to show you another version in just a minute. So I'm going to set this one aside. Here's my plastic one. I know I have a plastic one at home. It's terrible, but I haven't made one yet in ceramics, so I'm upgrading. Here's an old plastic one. This one has the top lid, which has the, the citrus juicer part here inside of it, and then it has a sieve here to sift out all the seeds and pulp and stuff like that. And then it has a bottom container so that you can uh, just have the juice at the bottom. If you want to try a model like this and have it more complicated, good. That's awesome. It's a nice challenge. If not, you can make one like the first example I showed you. Or this is a, a greenware cut in half version. You can kind of see how it's a double walled um, project. So we're going to be creating an outside wall here that's kind of the bowl shape. And then we're going to be pulling a cylinder in the center and enclosing this cove area. You can also put a little edge on here to help be a, a like intermediate sifter between here and the well at the bottom. All right, so to get started, uh, you're going to need all the regular things you would need in your tool bucket. Um, you may choose to have some extra tools, like some modeling tools to work with at your wheel. So when you're uh, getting ready to put things away, you can. Um, also, some of these curved pieces, like on the end of this popsicle stick, might be good for making those um, pieces of the juicer that you'll need to make. So getting started with your chunk of clay that's already wedged up, you're going to need about a pound and a half of clay. So plop that in the center just like you would. Let me readjust my camera here. All right, there you go. Now, this is the first project, so maybe it's first semester, maybe it's second semester. If you forget how to center, I would recommend watching your centering video. But make sure you center your clay nice. Make sure that you uh, cone it and compress it and get it centered real well, okay? Make sure that as you're working, you're taking the time to make your clay centered and awesome. Make sure there's no air bubbles in it as well. That's kind of a, a level one problem is having air bubbles or air pockets or other chunks of clay. So make sure you get all those things taken care of. Now, once you've got your clay centered, normally we would open the clay and pull up a cylindrical wall right? But for this project, you're actually going to open all the way down. You're going to have two separate places. You're going to have the opening here on the edge for the bowl part, and you're going to have the area in the center that's going to form the, uh, the centerpiece like that, all right? So step one, you're going to open your clay, and you're going to open that clay, and you're going to go all the way down to the bottom of the wheel head. Now on level one, every time you went down to the wheel head, I was like, oh, now you have to start over. You've got a hole all the way through your clay. In this model, we actually want that hole in the middle of our clay so that it can be lighter um, and hollow on the inside. So you're gonna open all the way down till you see the wheel head. Then you're gonna pull out, just like you're gonna make a cylinder, you're gonna pull the floor out, oh, I'd say maybe inch or so. So a little bit smaller than the bottom of a mug. And you can see as I've been pulling already, I've got this inner line and this outer line here. All right. Now what we're going to do is instead of starting like we normally would and just pulling from the bottom up, we're going to take your index finger or a combination of your index finger and thumb or middle, whatever, and you're going to cut this clay kind of in half. And you're going to press down and notice I have my fingers on the inside of this hole, and I'm kind of gently supporting that clay from the inside so it doesn't start to buckle. Okay, now I've got it down pretty far and I've got this big lump of clay in the middle. Now this is the part here that you're gonna actually start pulling. So I'm gonna take this chunk, I'm gonna make sure that rim's 
not too wobbly. And I'm going to start pulling this chunk of clay. Pull a little cylinder so it's nice and even. And so now I've got a hollow inside. The floor is nice and clean. And I've got this pretty reasonably tall, thinner cylinder. And I'd say, I don't know, maybe it's three inches tall or so. Okay, now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this cylinder and you're gonna start collaring it in. Just like I showed you in level one, when I said, you know, we need to make our cylinders just a little bit thinner or, you know, bring the top back together, I would say, do the A-OK -okay sign. You know, A-OK, -okay, right on. And collar that clay around and bring the tip closer together and close that tip over. So you can see how it's kind of getting um, closer here. Okay. Now one thing about collaring so much like this is your clay ends up getting thicker as you go up so you, or, and end uneven. So you want to make sure that your clay is continuing to be even as you go up. Okay. Now that I kind of evened it out again, I'm going to collar that clay back in, bring it together into a point. Bring it together a little bit more. So I've got just a finger hole left at the top. And now I'm going to get my finger in one last time. I'm going to pull that clay. I'm actually pulling the clay on the inside. And now, depending on how tall this cylinder is, you can like cut it close down here, closer. You want you want the the uh, cove in the si inside to be, you know, about two inches tall. So I'm just going to collar this top really small. I'm going to continue collaring that little top because I want it to be about that tall. I'm just going to take that little leftover top off because I had a little bit too much. Pop that in my bucket. And you can see I have a little teeny tiny hole there. I'm just going to collar it one more time and pinch it all together. And now we've got that air pocket trapped inside of there. Okay, so that air pocket trapped inside of there, just like our first project of our pinch pots, now I can take this rib and shape the cove. So I can shape it to be whatever shape I want. If I want it to be a little bit thinner, a little bit wider, if this tip is bugging me and I want it to be a little bit smushier or rounded, I can kind of smush it down and readjust that shape. Okay, so you can kind of change that shape around. Okay, once you have your cove set in the center, whether it's too tall or too small, you can change that. Then, you can collar it in just a little bit more, and grab some clay from the bottom and pull it up, and you can make, and I can always change this cove a little bit more if I want to. I can take a little tool and make a little a little ledge there for the juice to sift through by just pressing my finger in. Okay. Now you're going to experiment with how you want this to look, how you want it to feel, but I can leave a little space like that, kind of like this one here, so that I can catch that uh, the little leftover dregs. Okay. If you don't want to do that, just leave that part out if it's too challenging for you. You can try it. If it's too challenging, leave it out. The next part is to make the bowl shape. So you're going to take this outer chunk of clay, which we haven't dealt with yet. It might be a little bit off center if you've bumped it or something. So make sure to center it. Make sure that we're pulling a bowl at this point. So if you need to slow your wheel down, slow it down. But I'm going to pull this wall just like I would for my, my five inch bowl that we did in level one. Um, and you can make it bigger, wider, shallower. There's no necessarily wrong answer. The only thing you want to make sure is leave enough room so that as you're juicing, you're not like cracking your knuckles against the wall of it. Okay, so I'm going to just pull, do one more pull here to even it out and widen it. And there we go. Okay, now I'm going to get my sponge. Well, maybe I won't use a sponge because that's going to bump the inside, okay? But compress your rim just like you would on a bowl. Smooth it. 
I'm going to do my undercut here. Now at this point, you know, if you're uh, feeling like you really know what you're doing and you want to, you can try to cove this a bit. You can take one of the popsicle sticks and you can make a little inset line. and cut it flat so that you have a little flat inset here that can sit in the top of a bowl. Um, you don't have to do that, but I'm just saying if you want to think ahead, you know, so that it looks a little bit like, excuse my camera angle here, it looks a little bit more like that underneath so that it could sit inside of a bowl, you can do that, all right? Um, Okay, now let's say that this is pretty much done. There's two more steps you need to do. We're gonna make a little, um, the pitcher edge of it. Okay, so you're gonna take one hand and hold the thumb and the finger like this. Take your index finger and gently pull from the bottom up to the top and pinch a little bit as you pull up and you're gonna make that little divot. Now, if it's a little bit off center, like mine's just a little bit wonky, you can take it and just kind of reshape it one finger pull at a time. Uh, if you want to, you can get two fingers wet and you can actually kind of like, like you're pulling a handle, pull those edges and kind of actually shape it. But at the end, what you want is you want to be, have a smooth lip so that people don't cut their fingers. And you want to make sure that it bends over just enough so that it pours well, okay? Now, the last step is you'll notice on um, like this example and this example, we have that texture, sorry, uh -huh. there we go, on the texture on the top, which is the part that actually juices the citrus. So you could do that in a number of different ways. Um, I'm just gonna take this modeling tool here, or you could take your rib. Um, you can do it a couple of different ways. You could do straight lines, you could do curved lines. One uh, way that you can do it is if you start and you put your wheel real slow and you pull down in a spiral, you'll create a little spiral, and then start in the next one right after the first one, and kind of move your hand at the same rate, and you'll get some spirally things. Now, uh, what you can do then is afterwards, you can even enhance those spirals or those wedges, or if you wanna do straight lines or whatever, you can enhance them by pinching some straight lines and pulling the little lines. You know, if you were to imagine putting a coil from the top to the bottom and then pinching and kind of smoothing it down almost like you were pulling a handle or something. You could do that. You could have a couple different ones offset. You could put little nubbins on, really the sky's the limit. Um, but you wanna have some kind of texture there so that uh, the citrus actually has something to have friction against, all right? So uh, that's our finished juicer. Um, you're gonna need to let it dry and harden up to get leather hard. And then um, I'll have a sec second video with pulling the handle on the back and I'll show you a couple different kinds of handles that you could pull. So you'll just cut that piece off. Uh, make sure not to leave any uh, water in the basin of uh, the citrus basin here because you don't want that water to crack uh, your juicer base. All right, put that on a bat, let it get leather hard, and we'll come back for the next video where I show you how to pull a handle. Thanks for joining me.